If you would please uh, stand up and say the pledge with me. The flag is in the back corner. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. 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 Booms here. Weisberg. Here. Shane. Here. Absent. Okay. Do we have any correspondence this evening? None that I know of. No correspondence? Nope. Are there any visitor statements this evening? <laughs> uh, I don't think we have visitor statements this evening. Uh, it's for the student activity report, sir. One second, sorry. All right. Good evening, everyone. This is my second to last presentation. So just take advantage of every minute of my presence. <laughs> <laughs> this is the first time we've seen your face. I know, but not the mask. <laughs> is that you? No, I was talking to my math teacher from last year because I have Calc 7th, and she teaches in the same room 8th period. And she's like, well, it's nice to know how you finally look. Because <laughs> she actually was, um, she had to take an extended period online because she had, pre she had, uh, I think, an autoimmune disease. So I also got to see her. <laughs> Lots of love to Mrs. McLennan. But anyways, so first up, obviously covering student council. So kind of the elephant in the room. We had our winter fed stance in assembly last month, and I think both events were really successful in their own ways. With regards to the dance, it's always um, kind of how we brand it is we try to differentiate it from homecoming, making sure that it's for everyone because homecoming and prom are kind of couple dances, but we encourage people to go in friend groups for Winterfest, which is what I did. Um, so I think it was really successful with that, especially with homecoming being a lot centered around dancing and with music. But with the Winterfest dance in the West Building, we had a lot of activities in the Wood Commons, like the silent disco, uh, giant Jenga, and then we also had a Wii game, um, and then a lot of students took advantage of the relaxation areas, which were in the lower sports center lobby. Um, and then with regards to the assembly, it actually started super late, and we had to cut part of the end of the assembly, because students, so many students were filing in, and like students were sitting on the basketball floor. Um, and on the bottom left, you see the boys' basketball team, who lost to the girls' basketball team in a three-point shooting competition. And I don't want to take credit for the state title, but I think this was a pretty good warm-up event. <laughs> um, and it was actually super fun to go see the girls. I drove me and four friends two and a half down, out, two and a half hours down to Redbird Arena, and it was super fun. Um, and then also, with just updates and leadership roles, I'll touch on club transitions soon. Um, but we actually have um, something that will affect all of you for next year. So um, the school board representative position will no longer be under student council's domain for next year. So all student leaders will be able to apply for this position just because we really wanted to open up to all students who wanted to you know, break the school board. So um, you will not be see, you're not guaranteed to see Sam Anton or Brianna Shack here next month with me. So I think that's super exciting just to get more representation and different viewpoints right. throughout the school. Um, and then also for the co-curricular fair, um, for next year's student council um, general members, all general members will have to sign up for student council before the school year starts and have it in their schedule. So that's one change we're making next year just to have a really solidified roster because that's been causing some issues this year. So the co-curricular fair, fair is super important for us just to make sure that all <coughs> incoming families are aware of the great club. Um, and then also, I think there were like 120 clubs when I was a freshman, and I think now we're up to 150 plus. So that's really great for just all student activities and making sure that everyone has an interest here. Okay, so the next slide is for F and um, So at the beginning of the semester, um, there was a satisfaction survey sent to all the freshmen so just asking basic questions um, about approachability with mentors, how mentors prepare for advisory every day, um, making sure that it's a safe and fun and welcoming environment, and then most importantly, um, asking if 
the students really feel that their mentors care about them. And as you can see throughout, um, I think this was 29, or 2020, 2021, 2022, um, all the numbers keep increasing. I think this really just speaks to the intentionality of the freshman mentor program because Ms. Dittman and Ebor just does a really great job meeting throughout the year and really analyzing how last year went and making improvements for next year. Um, and I think um, with such visit, it's really clear when, we, when Ms. Dittman talks about the FMP program and kind of just the uh, different advancements we've made throughout the years that it just keeps on getting better and better and I think this is really reflected in this survey. Um, and then for National Honor Society, just two large events, so this um, semi-annual blood drive. Don't let this photo fool you. I signed up to donate third period, but <coughs> my talent couldn't connect. Their like, systems weren't working up until fourth period, so I sadly didn't get to donate blood. Still got the pizza coupon, so <laughs> I guess that worked out for me. But there were 97 signups, which I think is like 291 lives saved, because they do three, one donation equals three lives. So that's really amazing for them. And also St. Baldrick's, um, there were $5,000 raised by just the top three participants. Um, and a lot of students um, braved the bald, um, which is super, you know, I just think it's cool because I definitely could not put myself out there like that. Um, so definitely super cool of them to do that. So who were the, who, who were the participants? Who got their hair, sh they had shaved? Um, so two, um, one of them was Johnny Abraham, Euro, um, and then um, I'm not sure about the rest, but I know that Jaden Varghese and um, Shoham from NHS board also did it, and then we can't forget about uh, Dr. Gergen, Dr. Eddie, and Mr. Wellington. So, <laughs> now Dr. Eddie always rocks the beanie, so you can't always tell, but he is bald at the moment. Nothing wrong with it. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and then on the left, I know I talked, about, I touched on this last meeting, um, but I think Dr. Eddie has just been proven wrong. I think with sports, with boys hockey, girls basketball, and boys from the dive, I feel like I can win a state championship. <laughs> like, can it really be that difficult? Yeah, actually, it definitely is. Um, so I just wanted to touch on this because I was able to be there for girls basketball and um, boys hockey, and they were the most alive student sections I've ever been to. For boys hockey, I think it might have edged out the girls just a little bit. Some of the students brought, made signs, um, the fat heads of all the players. Um, and then um, some of my friends bought boas, and then there were also like towels for us to um, bring in the air when we scored, and they absolutely destroyed St. Ryder. So it was 5-0, um, and it was definitely fun to wave at all the Ryder fans walking past us as we were. <laughs> celebrating with the trophy. You guys um, were much louder than they were, by the way. Yes. You did a much better job. No, because <laughs> there was like an argument about where to stand. So one of the moms came and said the goalie, Jonathan Adler, wanted us to be on the other side, because usually we'd be on the left, next to Vider. Um, but the goalie wanted us to be behind him because he was on that end <laughs> for two periods instead of one. So we fulfilled his request, and he gave us a shutout. So that worked out for us. Um, then the second bullet point, pretty obvious. Um, just I feel like as I talk to my friends more and more, senioritis, senioritis just keeps getting brought up more and more and more. So I think with spring break coming this Friday, um, prom graduation and college, um, I think we're really just all one foot out the door. Um, I think our spring athletes, we can't participate as much in missing school because we have to be eligible to play. Um, so that's kind of disappointing. But Definitely, I think seniors are have a lot to look forward to, but are just kind of trudging along through each day. Um, and then, last thing, can you go back? Oh, sorry, yep. Very good. Um, so for clubs, transitions, and preparations, this is really where leadership training comes in handy, because it's one thing to kind of lead a club and know the day-to-day -day operations, but it's, one, it's another thing to teach another generation of student leaders and really pass on legacy and tradition. I hope that's really, um, with student council, I think that's something we've done throughout the year. Um, and it's, helped to have, it's helpful to have some student leaders involved that will be here next year with our current operations. Um, but I think a lot of clubs are really focused on this. And I think with social media, it's really visible to all the students. I think I had like a flood of just 
campaign photos and ads for all these students. Um, and I have a lot of respect for them because it's really hard to put yourself out there in front of 3,300 kids, but it's definitely super fun. Okay, then last slide, um, student highlights. So obviously Mr. SHS, so Senior Class Board's annual event was super fun this year. We had 12 amazing candidates. Um, also our first female contestant, Carmen, which was super amazing just to, for inclusivity. And I think it brought like a different audience and one of my friends, Dia, was um, escorted um, one of the candidates on the stage, um, and she said that the PAC was absolutely packed, so at least like 500 attendees, which is super amazing. Um, and I think part of, the, and, um, part of the high attendance and participation with the student body is because it worked with so many different groups. You have senior class board running the whole thing, but then also you have individual choreographers for the dance helping out. And then, like I said, um, a bunch of students escorted all the candidates on stage. So a lot of friend groups and different um, types of students were involved. Um, and then next up, the Patriot Theater Company's winter play ranked, touched on kind of just um, competitive um, school environment. And I think it was really important because I think a lot of us can kind of relate to this at moments. Um, and just, again, lots of respect for the actors and actresses because I know that rehearsals and show week are super, super stressful. So it's definitely harder than a lot of the other extracurriculars. Not that they can compare, but definitely a lot of work for all those students. Um, and then last up, we have trivia night. So the, I think this is an annual event, but obviously it was skipped because of COVID, but it was between um, Rotary Youth Club and Geography Club, so Kahoot Trivia, just about social studies, geography, flags, all that type of stuff. Um, and one of my friends said that there were 10 to 20 teams of six, so that's around 100 participants. Um, and it was, it was, I think it was $5 to participate with the trivia. So that's about $500 raised for um, the warm operation, which donates coats and other winter clothing items to families in need. And I think this is a really big step for student activities and kind of symbolic because um, student council went to a leader, um, had a leadership professional come in. And one of the big takeaways that we had was combining with other clubs and really collaborating. And that kind of birthed the student council and FMP BOVA event last year. And this is kind of a continuation of that. Um, so really, again, just being really insightful and intentional within student activities, trying to boost engagement among the student body and his So, yeah. that? That's so do you know where you're going to school yet? Okay. Okay. I was waiting for this one because you guys were all on Michaela, George <laughs> Washington. Um, so I've gotten into Northeastern in Boston. Um, so that was one of my four early schools. So I got two acceptances and two deferrals. So that's my top one right now, but I have seven schools left in like the next three weeks. So what's your what's your what's your preference? So um, location, I do really want to be in Boston. So Northeastern is my top Boston school, and I don't really see that changing. I'm visiting April 10th, um, and then I also really like Notre Dame, Wash U, and Michigan. But Michigan's kind of contingent on the Ross Business School decision as well. So, good choices. Yeah. You can get all of them. Yeah. No, Northeastern was like, I'm very lucky because the early schools were so difficult this year because you have so many kids applying. Like, the average at Stevenson has to be like 10, I think like 10 schools, which is like way above national averages because that's how we are at Stevenson. So, um, <laughs> Yeah, really difficult, but I feel like I'm in a good spot. Good. And I'll be happy at Northeastern <coughs> regardless, so. Good. Okay. Best thing you can have in life is choices. Exactly. You already got No, that's like more difficult for me. <laughs> it's too much pressure. <laughs> no, just worry about the menu you. when you dine out. Exactly. Have a good week. Take care. I don't want to have a good night. Bye. New business, all right. Well, um, there are a lot of reasons that we're excited to uh, be able to have um, a, a little bit um, back to normal experiences uh, here. And one of them is the opportunity to celebrate our ambassador awards. So that's a lot of fun. We haven't had the opportunity to have kids uh, and parents uh, here at the board meetings in a while. So it's exciting to see everybody.
Uh, and tonight, we have the honor of celebrating a state championship. I believe our first state championship for our chess league. So, second, third, fourth, fifth? The hundredth state championship for our chess league. Third, okay, all right. Third state championship for our chess team. So we're very excited about that. Um, and to do so, we'll turn it over to uh, Mark Anishek, who will introduce um, our students and coaches. And uh, when he does, uh, folks can come on up and we have uh, special awards for you. So, uh, so I'm excited to introduce our esteemed, inimitable chess team yep. state yep. championship, starting with Manam Agarwal. You gotta have your picture taken. <laughs> and Fred Yun. Son. Aaron Gunn. Karinji Shiva Kumar. Sanvi Adesamali. Treehouse Row. we'd like to introduce the coaches, Coach Vincent Springer, Coach Scott Oliver, and Coach Ken Wallach. can get together so that we can get a group like you're on the chess board. <laughs> Yeah, come forward. 
About the how does the tournament run? How does this actually work? How does, what was it? What was it like? Ravi, do you want to you turn it? around and talk to us. <laughs> 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 uh, yeah, it was a two-day tournament uh, with 120 teams from Illinois, and uh, we played seven rounds and we won all seven rounds. How does it work? Uh, you just you, you play a game against somebody uh, and you beat them, you advance. Yeah, so there's eight boards um, from each team playing against each other, um, ranked in the strength, and um, board one is worth 12 points for a team, and it goes down by one point increasingly, so board two is worth 11 points, board three is worth 10 points, and you know, if you sum up the total amount of points you score, or a team can score 68 points, so we need to get at least 34 points. Points. Is board one tougher than board two? Yeah, because the best player plays on the best board. player. Yeah. Uh, so how many board ones did you have? Each one has one board. Each, board. Each team has eight players. It's like filling up a court of tennis. We've got part one, part two, part three. Yeah. Wow. So how many of you are seniors? Really? Wow. Three seniors on the team. So I, I think what she's in. saying is, we'll see you next time. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's why she was asking. That was the real question. Yeah, oh, we'll be back next <laughs> so it's really hard. Say you compete against school, Stevenson versus school two, and you have your players, you total up your points, and then another two schools are playing. There is, is it then round robin where the winner of each of those then progresses? Yeah. And, and, yeah. So you play teams who have the same amount of points as you, so the undefeated teams, you know, keep battling each other until there's only one winner. But every team, every team plays seven matches, so while we were playing, there were also like 60 other, you know, sets of teams, pairs of teams playing at the same time in a big ballroom. Right, we were in a curtained off, in a roped off area at the very front. Mm -hmm. so we, were, we were in the top seed going into it. How many days is that? Like, how many matches do you play in a day? Do you just keep playing? Um, four and three. Wow, that's a lot. Is it exhausting? Right, I got a question for you guys. Yeah. And depending on the answer, we'll let you out of this room. You get it right. Uh, show of hands, how many watch or saw the Queen's game? <laughs> really? It's wow. A bunch of, okay. So my question is, is that really a Queen's game? Is that yeah. an opening? Yeah. Yeah. It's an opening. Yeah. I know, but that really is. Even I know that. Yeah. <laughs> you purposely go in knowing you're going to play that. Yes. And you build your strategy around what your moves are in the beginning. Yes. So, like, depending on how the game goes, you'll have, like, anywhere from, like, the first, like, five to, like, 15 to 20 moves in a row. And then. Okay. Well, when you have the chance, watch the Queen's Gambit. <laughs> so I am, I am curious, how do you, besides just pl uh, playing games, um, uh, repetition, how do you study to improve? How do you have that deliberate practice? I mean, do you sit and study strategies? Do you, mm -hmm. how do you improve? Um, um, yeah, we work with, uh, some of us work with the coach, but mainly doing like tactical exercises to so gain my like, pattern recognition. Um, you know, studying your past games to you know, see when you've made mistakes back and forth. And just memorizing like, your opening play like the first five to 20 minutes. And, and I took some pictures of them before some of the most important rounds, like in the final against Barrington. And, and they all had their computer screens open and they're reviewing they're studying their opening systems and they're preparing well, for their say, opponents. Let me ask you something. Hmm. You, yeah. just, you just said something that, that struck me about the movie. I really didn't try that movie. But here you just said you're warming up and you're, and you're warming up on the first five to 20 minutes. There seems to me almost an infinite amount of combinations. 
conditions of permutations that can happen during that process. Yeah, so are you anticipating that when you move move number one, the right move for your opponent is move, move number two? Yeah, so probably your last round. Yeah, so like uh, there's like a lot of um, you know, computer programs and databases where you can see, you know, we know I'm going to play you know, player X, right? So they have a certain you know, opening repertoire that they're looking at their profile. Yes, yeah. and, and then we just take part of that. Yeah, yeah. he uh, his entire game he had in the last round he had played before. But do you really remember that far off? Twenty moves or what your strategy? Is? Yeah. That's why we're not just That's why they're state champions. <laughs> <laughs> Again, state champions, just to be clear. Yeah. Congratulations. Congratulations. Well done. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Congratulations. Thank you. So, um, by the way, just as a side note, um, we since the chess team won state, we also had three other state champions, including girls basketball and hockey and boy, swimming. Sorry, sorry, swimming, girls basketball, boys hockey. God, it's, it's so many. Um, so what we're going to do, um, if you recall, we had this wonderful challenge a few years ago. We're actually going to have our May board meeting in the West Auditorium. And we're going to celebrate them all in one night. Wow. Sound fun? Yep. Okay. It'll be fun. And we'll actually maybe put some treats and stuff out in the lobby. Carol sure. will copy things like that. Yeah. So. Okay. Um, Are you going to sit? I don't know. Uh, <laughs> I, uh, it's 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 a a we're here. We're here. We're here. So another benefit of being back uh, in person in our meetings is the opportunity to have our um, teachers uh, come and present. And so we're so excited to be able to have fine arts with us. Uh, John, I'll let you introduce your colleagues. But thank you guys for being here. We really do appreciate it. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, tonight in Fine Arts, we're talking about music production. And in the history of Stevenson, this is a fairly new program, so we're excited to share this with you and how we embed social emotional learning as part of our practice, but then use the student voice survey to really impact um, how we change and improve and work with our students. But with me today. Um, so I'm Maggie Vogler. I teach music production one and music production two, and this is my sixth year teaching at Stevenson. I'm Alice Knudsen. I teach music production one with Maddie. This is my 32nd year at Stevenson. Oh, that got that got a smattering. Okay, kind of cool. And I'm Kirsten Silton. I work with Alice. I teach choir and AP music theory, and I'm the music court leader. I'm John Bryce. I'm the director of my arts. And I don't have an amazing picture of me. <laughs> Are they singing their, their program with to us tonight? You're not singing? We will, you will hear some music. Yeah, okay. Not from us, you don't want to hear it. Yeah, you'll hear the better. kids. They're better. Uh, so just a little mile high view of uh, music program as a reminder, this is an elective option. So students elect to take a fine arts class. And when it comes to music production, recently we have resequenced the classes. So it's music production one, music production two, and next year we're thrilled to offer a year-long advanced music production. And if we look back over the last 10 years, um, we used to offer two classes, Discover Music, which was kind of like this general music, as a history, um, and Composing and Arranging, which was about writing music and creating original music. But in 2014-15, we decided to create a new class called Creating Music with Technology. And once we started this new class, we can see enrollment and sections increase. 
And then in 1617, we wanted to create a second class called Music Industry and Production, learning about the music industry um, and how music is produced. And then over the years, we realized we need this to be sequenced rather than two parallel courses. And then we start this 2021. And as you can see, sections and enrollment has grown to next year um, when we have the advanced music production. I'm sorry, a little rectangle there. But now we're going to have 11 sections with close to 200 students in class. And uh, so we're really excited for growth. Definitely credit to these three ladies here and the music team for their vision for their implementation and really being um, very relevant to what students were doing at home and the industry out there. So um, this is what Troy likes to call the School of Rock. <laughs> these are the classes that he's talking about. Um, so in these classes, uh, we focus on four skills, musicianship, creating, performing, and responding, and um, four of our skills and our standards are aligned to national and Illinois state um, standards. Um, oh, there we go. Um, so in this class, um, students use professional level instruments, recording equipment, and music production software to create original music. Um, there's a really strong focus on students de uh, developing their original voice um, and also on collaboration. So we have um, just like a brief uh, snippet of three different students' songs, um, and you'll be able to hear um, a few things, one, like the variety that happens in this class, uh, and then also just like the level of, um, just the, the quality is so professional because they have access to this really high level um, equipment. So. Oh, one and a two. <laughs> Oh, Eric's. Can we try this last time? It's paused right now. Did you unmute the. So you guys want to. Like, Eric was turning on the volume. And <laughs> I think I got it. It's working. Testing to hot mic, hot mic. All right, let me back up here.
So um, we came up with this idea celebrating individual artistic identities within a creative community and the three projects that Mandy and Alice are going to talk about really are ways that students have been pretty involved. Um, yes, yeah, so I get the fun job of talking about the sampling project. This is my favorite project that we do in the class. Uh, again, I only teach the level one students, but this happens about two-thirds of the way through the class. And these projects are designed um, certainly to get them comfortable with the equipment, get them comfortable with each other, um, and layering in these pieces that are going to allow them to explore their voice as a artist and uh, get to share who they are. So the sampling project, sampling is when you take um, like a pre-existing recording, a sound. It doesn't necessarily have to be a piece of music. It can be, um, you know, sound effects or sounds from the environment. And you take that and reuse it, reimagine it in a new original piece of work. So the students uh, on this project are uh, told to sample something from that highlights who they are. Maybe their heritage, maybe their communities, their activities. I had a student that um, is on the basketball team and sampled the sound of a, like the whoosh of like a, a ball going through the hoop. And that like was the foundation of the, the rhythm and the loop that they did. Um, so I really felt like I got to know these students through this uh, project. And when they share with each other, they get to know who they are. So here's on the wall, you can see some of the extracted quotes that came. A lot of them stating things about their cultural heritage, about their activities. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, and then the Choose Your Own Adventure, I think, do you remember when you were little and you had the, the Choose Your Own Adventure books? Well, we came up with this idea to allow them to, number one, have a lot of student choice um, and ownership in the project um, that could really play to their strengths and also help get them um, you know, get them exploring in new ways. So some of that would be like writing an original song, um, remaking things, um, but again, it's just really another opportunity for them to, again, develop their unique individual voice as an artist. Um, so this next project is something that the Music Production 2 students have done. Uh, this is gonna be the second year that they engage in this project, um, and uh, essentially what this process is, is students write original songs focusing on political or social topics that they feel strongly about. Um, and it's completely student driven. So last year, um, the students selected three main topics that they wanted to focus on, which was Black Lives Matter, Mental Health, and LGBTQIA plus rights. Um, they wrote songs based around those themes, um, put the songs on a YouTube playlist and then use that playlist to um, generate donations for organizations that they selected, um, so like music activism essentially. Um, and the project ended up raising over $1,000 and the playlist, um, I think it has like 28,000, uh, or 20, you know what I'm saying, 2,800. <laughs> That's like way too many. Um, yeah, a bunch of people have checked it out, um, which is really exciting. And we are currently in the process of working on that project right now. Um, the new playlist is going to come out on the 18th. So, um, so the next few things I'm going to talk about is just um, some things that we engaged in this past semester. Um, so with coming back to the classroom, um, we wanted students to feel comfortable in the environment. We wanted them to feel like they could be creative. Um, and we wanted them to have just ownership over the space. Uh, so we created this mini lab beautification task force, which is a ridiculously long title. Um, and this uh, was not only work done from the music production students, but also our piano classes mm -hmm. yeah. and um, the AP music theory class, because they all work in the same space. Um, so the students worked to bring in LED lights, which you can see um, in the picture, to just help with the vibe of the classroom. Um, they wanted alternative seating, so you can see some of the students using bean bags, a bunch of chairs. Um, and then the next thing that they're working towards is bringing in artwork, more artwork into the classroom. So um, that guitar is our first example, but uh, it was the guitar was basically beyond repair, and one of the students <laughs> was like, "Hey, can I take that home and paint on it?" Um, and so she brought it back, and that's what it looked like. So that's going to go somewhere in the classroom, and we're going to work to get more student art in the space, just so that. Um, yeah, it just feels like friendly and welcoming and, and creative to inspire them when they're working. So, yeah. 
Um, and then new this year for the very first time, music production merch, which I'm sporting right now. Um, so this is all student designed artwork um, and just as a way to kind of get the community to be more visible and to help kids feel like they're a part of something. Um, and then the proceeds from this merch uh, sales are going to the activists play this project. So, yeah. Is that a national project? The, the, oh. activist pro the activist music project, is that a national program? Or I know it's something you said we're doing, but is it affiliated? Yeah. Um, no. no. So the organizations that the students would then pick. Got it. So they yes. decide. So ours is called the act yeah. activist music project. Yes. And then they decide yeah. where to. They're picking organizations got it, got that got have got to do yeah. the theme of like the got it. Got it. Yeah, I would love to hear those when they come out. Could you maybe have it sent oh, to Eric so that yeah. we can yeah. 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 Yeah, and I think you all should have a handout. Um, just so you know, in the top left corner, we'll direct you. There's a QR code. Uh, it's come around. I think there is. Mr. Gray says here it is. There we go. And uh, the top left QR code will take you to the YouTube playlist. From last year. From last year. But the, when the new one comes out, that's what we'll do. Yeah, that's This is now, instead of an address, we look at this. Ask Brad. It's hard to type. Trust me. Yeah. I don't John, have you said One that? click away. <laughs> um, so, uh, Maddie and I um, administered the SVS in October, and while that's a great tool for year long courses, it's a challenge when you just have a semester course. So, this year we collaborated together and um, just wanted to be able to see at the end of this semester in December at, uh, during the final experience week just what our kids were thinking about. Um, are, are they still liking an English line to get that data from them? Um, so we did a, we developed an end of the course survey that, that we administered. Um, you know, we tried to make the language very uh, student friendly. So on here you can see um, one of the questions that we felt related to classroom belonging. Um, do you feel like you could be your authentic self in this class? And again, the students that were in the three and four range, uh, extremely high numbers. And then I think on the next one, the questions were, do you feel accepted and included in this class? And again, um, these are just two of many <laughs> questions that we had on that, but um, helps us to know that we're on the right path and onto something and that we need to continue this work. So what grade level are these students? All, uh, freshmen through seniors. Mm -hmm. um, from that survey, um, we tried to highlight some of these, but these are some of the responses um, taken directly from our students. Mm -hmm. Asked what it was like being a student in this class. Sure. I love that. <laughs> Super positive. Some of the pictures here, um, for the first time now that we were back in person, you realize that the, the MP1 and MP2 really launched during last year, so it was during the remote learning and hybrid learning. We were able to come together this year to offer a music production showcase, which um, happened at the very beginning of December. So some of these pictures come from that event where students were, you can kind of see his project is in the background on, uh, on Logic. Um, we had live performances and students playing their original compositions, workshop. It's like a TED talk. Really cool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. fans. And just some general quotes, things that the students have wanted to share. I love the comment. Oh, sorry. I'll okay. go back one slide. I love the comment where they said, the student said, to find the criticism you need to improve. You know how wonderful it is that a student is able to recognize that and then feel safe in your classroom to be able to ask for that. It's pretty amazing. It's it's. I know we normally wait till the end, but the the breadth of the kinds of things that they're saying and what you're doing in the class. I'm sitting here. You know, I, I was asking. Can you can you point to any? <laughs> Can you figure out what it is that you're doing that's having such a broad reaction or response in the success that you're having? Because this is this is incredible, just seeing the kinds of things that people are feeling in the class. 
I mean, I think like the biggest thing is just getting out of the way. Um, mm -hmm. Like the kids, they've listened to music since they were little. Um, and I think like they're coming in with so much knowledge and it's about like respecting that knowledge and celebrating that and all the kids are bringing in different levels of expertise and different things. Like maybe a kid has guitar experience, maybe another kid um, is like secretly working on being a rapper. They can meet each other, they can collaborate. Um, the classroom's really open. Um, a lot, it's very project-based, it's very, very project -based. Um, flexible. Um, we encourage um, students, you know, especially after the first couple weeks, you know, to show vulnerability. We show vulnerability in front, in front of them. We all have to pick up like a second instrument, so just, you know, um, and it, just to be honest and vulnerable with them as teachers, I think it's really important. Yeah. But I think that, like, they've been consuming music and listening to music for, they've listened to tens and hundreds of thousands of songs. They have that compass of, of knowing what they like and what they don't like. Um, so I think it breaks down a lot of barriers that you might see in other um, types of classes. Yeah. Um, so th it's really, there's very, there's no rules. Yeah. There's yeah. very few rules. <coughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, there's really no rules. So, so I, I don't know, if, I got a hundred questions. Yeah, I don't know if you guys are finished though, so. Oh, no, yeah. Yeah, we just had some more quotes. Oh, like okay. That's pretty much, you know, what we, what we have. Um, Fire with you. Yeah. Can I? Hi. I got a free face here. Uh, let me just make a framing remark because I, I'm going off, way off on a ledge. Here. Number one, uh, I'm going to sound like that progressive commercial on TV where you sound like your father and your parents. Yes. Okay. Uh, the other framing remark is I remember vividly sitting at the foot of my mom and dad's bed. We had one of the few TVs on the block watching Ed Sullivan when the Beatles came out. <laughs> and my father saying, what shit is this? He said, you guys gotta listen to Benny Hill. Okay. So right away I was, I wasn't sure what my music was gonna be. But that's, that's the spirit of the question I'm coming from. You're, you're showing us something that looks terrific for a child's development in terms of free thinking and in expressing themselves. But are there any limits to, do you put up any goalposts to what good music is or good music isn't? Is that something that's definable or is it just an expression of what anybody thinks of it? It almost looks like it's so wide open anything goes. Is that the way it is? Um, yeah, I mean, I think like, actually it's great that this quote is up here, but like, it, like how important it is to listen to different people's perspectives when it comes to music. So like all these kids are coming in with different ideas about what good music is, and that's they're not wrong. Well, that's um, what I'm asking. Yeah, I understand their perspective. Right. I'm asking your perspective. That's my perspective. I mean, yeah, I'm just like we are just there to like celebrate what they want to do. You're giving them a great vehicle to express themselves mm -hmm. and to mature in that in that field of expressing themselves through music. But you know, my generation, and, and, I, and I'm asking because I'm struggling. My generation was one of Neil Diamond and, uh, and uh, Simon and Garfunkel and uh, even throwing the Beatles. There were lyrics that made sense that, that really depicted issues of the day. I don't get that when I'm in the gym now. I, 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 all I hear is rap and it gives me a headache. To those kids, I, that I, is their expression. That's I know. Am I, that's their am I just that on a step? Yeah. With respect to that argument, they are addressing issues. Yeah. 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 Well, that's what I want to know. Yeah. 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 How is that an expression with what I'm hearing? Just make me not hearing it. You're not hearing it. You're, not hearing it. <laughs> you're, not hearing it. you're, you're saying yes. it too fast. Maybe Pick you're not. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, maybe I'm just too old for this. Can I Maybe what we, we invite you to our showcase yeah. this spring, and you can hear the student when you hear the artists talk about the reason I, I, why. I would love to do that yeah. 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 because I really would like to understand what the hell they're talking about. Yeah. <laughs> because I'm so used to listening to listening to a defined lyric. We have some actually one of my best, one of my favorite conversations that happens mm -hmm. is, and it gets really deep, and they really go there. But we yeah. talk about what is music. And, and like a basic like question, a whole period, and it takes a whole period, and it's so hard for me not to, 
you know, I'm an older teacher, and you know, it's hard for me not to. That's a great question. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's, but Maddie is 100% correct. When you get out of the way and let them talk and let them explain what they're going for, it's, it's amazing. And it has taught me as a veteran teacher so much to be a part of this class. It's really I'm transformed. To, to get my out of the way? Get out of the way when you can. Now, I don't want to get the impression that like the projects are just willy nilly and just like we do set up parameters and yeah. we're trying, we're, especially at the early level, we're teaching them the how process. to use this, these tools yeah. and what the process that artists go for. You know, so there are, you know, we want a project approximately this long and approximately, you know, with some flexibility using these different number of sounds and that. So there are some some bumpers that, that we give them, um, but where they go with that is is really. I think what's true to just about everything in music and in terms of art forms too, the idea of technique, you know, so form, structure, instruments, you know, lyrics, how things are put together, that's what they really, you know, kind of I think provide as teachers. We sneak it in there. Yeah. Like we, yeah. we like we we talk about that yep, like chords yeah chords are a thing and yeah. melody's a thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But it's not like a sit down and you're be. going to learn about mm -hmm. chords today. It's a very yeah. different cool way I guess to teach. The question I have is yeah. because your engagement is so high. Um, what the way you teach, what could be reapplied in other classes? That's really great what question. I'm trying to good, good figure question. out. Great, great question. Yeah, good one. And maybe you have to think about it some more because it's it's so great to see the quotes, you know, that they are willing to take risks without the fear of failure. I mean, these are such mm -hmm. great life skills. So mm -hmm. you might have to dissect what you're doing to figure out how it can be reapplied. Mm -hmm. yep. Really good idea. Yep. You can come back next month. <laughs> 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 I think we should present and state on that. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Time. I think when, a, when it's a project-based kind of class, I also teach piano, like it's it's easier, um, you know. Yeah. Like teacher as facilitator. Yeah. Like I'm there to connect them with other students, I'm there to connect them with resources, I'm there to give them feedback that they're interested in, yeah. you know. Um, and that's something that I'm working on as a teacher is like For sure. not putting my own, like you're saying, like I have this idea of what music should be or you know, and the things that I listen to and not putting that on their music and letting them kind of guide, you know, like, what are you still thinking through on this music? Like, is there, and they get to ask, like, what do you think about this transition? Mm -hmm. Or like, you know, I'm noticing that the balance is kind of off. If they have thoughts about their music and it's just about, like, steering them where they want to go and helping, just connecting them with the tools that they yeah, need. Yeah, but you can't teach piano and sit a kid down and say, go express yourself. <laughs> hey, you can't do that. They have to know how to play the piano. Teach them some of the basic skills, and then you can, like, what, how you teach them the piano can be whether or not we're doing, um, you know, a, a very strict method book, or if we're doing, you know, if they bring a song in, hey, I'd like to learn how to play this, you know, right. then we can maybe modify it to their. Right. There's going to be a different version of this class where I said, like, where we said, right. you know, okay, now you're going to make a song just like the Beatles. Every kid in the class is going to make a song like the Beatles. Um, okay, now we're going to talk about the blues. Okay, right. now we're going to talk about hip hop. Everyone's going to make, you know, like a songwriting. That could be a very yeah. different kind yeah. of class, but I don't think one that would kids would be excited about. I don't think we would have this level of engagement. I don't think we'd have this um, amount of like sh musical sharing that happens mm -hmm. between the kids. Um, but so because it's so, so flexible, they're allowed to fill in that space like themselves. Amy's well, been trying to ask a question. Well, this is something else, but, but perhaps ownership is some of the key yeah. to that. To your point yeah. of you know them, them owning their journey and their learning and their and giving them the, the tools to do that is yeah. an interesting yeah. takeaway for everybody yeah. else. I mean, I heard two things. I heard project based and I heard choice. Right? Those are kind of two things. But but I would also say you know it, it's community of sharing where any day you pop in and someone's like, hey, um, I'd like to share my music, you know, what I've made so far, can you give me some feedback? Mm -hmm. You know, and it's just, it's fluid, and that's just what happens, and there's a lot of good vibes, a lot of good feedback. Um, it's at the student level, I think, how many times do we bring in professionals, you know, what are you doing? We have, we have such a great network of colleagues in the industry that they come and share their work, and they talk about, 
their experiences in the industry. We have, we have bands that will come in and perform on in-school field trips, and they'll talk about their creation process. So it's just very relevant to kids' interests. They'll like, hey, I was listening to this this weekend. Can we share a clip about this? And it's just really, we talk about how do kids drive the curriculum. It's, kids are driving this curriculum. Mm -hmm. I, I have a question for you. you you're, all, you're all talking about how you give them the words and they write the music, write, this, you know, write the story. Uh, what is it about music that has this emotional effect on us? Why is it that a certain type of music is something that I just can listen to and enjoy and relaxes me and something else to, or something? What is, what's it? One of my that? college professors says music or the study of arts is for feeling what writing is for thinking. Like this is an actual technical way to connect with the affective. Like this is something when you talk about why the arts are important, that truly is something that the arts can do in a way that nothing else can. And it's gonna be different for you and you and you. The, the way that every human has an affective response but it's through that artistic process that we sort of like hone um, like that interaction to our feelings. That's what I think. And I'm borrowing my college professor's <laughs> thoughts about that, but it really stuck with me all these years. Yeah, that's really cool. And to yeah. Dave's point about different music, and I know that you know kids, my own, I'll speak from experience, have sometimes a fairly narrow view of what's good, what's bad, mm -hmm. what's, you know, do you find that throughout the class you're able to facilitate an understanding between them? If somebody has an orchestra background and somebody's coming in with rap as a music, can you bring that together and show, is there a certain amount of respect that comes out of working together? And, yeah. Yeah. I mean, like that last yeah. quote, again, just the point of that. And the okay. world of the music business is so different than when we were growing up. Like, you know, it was, what you heard on the radio was what yeah. companies wanted you to hear. And with you know streaming services and YouTube, like anybody can get their music out there. So it is, there are no boundaries. Very difficult. Very difficult. One more if I can. What, uh, how do you grade these kids? Very, very specific standards and skills. Like um, what? Do we want to click back? Yeah. Uh, the yeah. first slide. Had the, the top two. So, so the four artistic processes to our state national standards are the process of creating, um, like making music, the process of responding to music, be able to articulate, talk about it, evaluate it, uh, connecting, how do you connect to it, can you express and These it? are all measurable? Yeah. yeah. I'm done. <laughs> so you can, you can see some of our um, overall skills and standards. Well, that's the why I'm an engineer. I was a you're right, and your answer I thought was terrific about the arts with feeling. Yeah. I, 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 that page fell off. I, I'm a one plus one person. I, uh, I, I, I wish I had more of that. But I'm ignorant of it. And when you're ignorant of it, it's hard to really do. You're, you're not ignorant of it. You don't know how to express it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure there are things you listen to and you say, wow, that sounds like great. something I really love moves that, that yeah. moves you. Or maybe it's under the class. Well, listen, yeah. my mom had a big crush on Neil Diamond, so, you know. <laughs> <laughs> he, was, he was your guy. If you want to give me a shot, you could do better. Yeah, than yeah. Neil Diamond was your guy. He, he yeah. was a Barry Manilow. Yeah. Barry Manilow. Yeah. But I always so, want, you know, just for me, to talk about being touched by music, I was always impressed with how the lyrics related to what the issues of the day were. And if you're telling me I just am not still listening, I don't understand the issues of the day. I believe you because I love you. But, man, it's tough, John. I mean, <laughs> well, listen to the students. Ah, yeah, you know, I know you're right. It just, when I'm out of step, it's hard. Yeah. What is that project? Yeah, I don't think you are, but I don't want to forget. This class is also, we, so we talked about the activist playlist. That's going to be on the top left corner for you guys to access. We're still oh. in Oh, we still have a couple more. All right, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No, 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 that's okay. Um, we've talked through a lot of these. Yeah, so we've we actually had to work on, but we're just going to continue to, and especially moving into advanced music production, where the students really are working on developing 
their brand as an artist, you know, these skills I know with the team, they're gonna continue to evaluate and make sure that there's a collaboration with the students. And then this is so you got access to the playlist. Um, the bottom one is this is this class and students' experiences have really opened up doors to get involved with Allstate. Um, and we have some Allstate performances on the bottom right if you guys want to see their videos. So those are students who um, submitted their original compositions at a statewide level and then um, received an award for their song. Hmm. Wonderful. Well, thank you. Do you, do you find that a lot of kids coming in have in a band, orchestra, that kind of, they're coming playing an instrument, do they have a music band, or does somebody just come in and say, you know what, I just kind of like music, I want to see what yeah. this is all about. Oh, it's, it's a little bit of both, but I would say the like, majority of the kids, it's generally their first music class. Yeah. Um, oh, really? Yeah, and a lot, oh yeah, which is great, that's what we want. Um, we want to make sure it's accessible to everybody, um, and that it feels welcoming. Um, but yeah, I mean, a lot of the kids will start, um, the semester and say like, oh, I'm really nervous. I can't read music or I don't play an instrument. And it's like, you don't need that stuff. And I think like the way we do music education, um, I don't know, sometimes like puts kids down um, and makes them yeah. think that they don't have the skills when really they do. They just haven't been connected with the tools. So. Thanks. Thank you guys. Well, really amazing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good philosophical debate. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you saw, but there's really amazing Sodexo treats. <laughs> there's cookies, yeah, treats, right? and yeah. like dishes. We're just so excited to see people. It's been so long. They're just eating. Yes. <laughs> it's all over. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, guys. Oh, is this someone's? Oh, that is mine. Oh, oh my goodness. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah, it's so there's yeah we have a music production room. Um, it's nowhere near as big enough as John would like. Um, but I mean that's the room that they were decorating, you know. But it the problem is we just don't have space. That I mean I would say probably the room should be fifty percent bigger, easily at least. I mean it's a small class. It's probably about half the size of this room, and it's got twenty five seats for 25 kids and there's a computer for every kid or now we've got laptops but and now we're at a point like it's a, it's a music class or a technology class well if it's a music class all kids have instruments so is the laptop the instruments their instrument go. that they get to go home with so it's hard to they're just not you know we're believe it or not even though we're what 1.2 million square feet there's with the number of kids that we have and the different programs there's just not enough space not that we're asking for space, but... Um, well, there's some space John, opening up when the athletic department moves. Maybe you should... Uh, if John Grice says here. drink the Kool-Aid, my answer is pass it. <laughs> I wish I knew what the hell... I wish I, had, I, wish I was better for it. You're great. Thank you. All right. Thank you, all. Thank you John. Thank you. Appreciate Thank it. You. Thank you. <clears throat> okay, the next item um, is our textbook recommendations that we're bringing forward to you uh, <clears throat> after a first reading in uh, February. Uh, up here. Don't we have to approve yes. yes, we need to approve them tonight. Uh, just as a reminder, there's about six uh, different texts marked for yep. the 2022 yep. 2023 school year. Um, most of them are digital. When we have been able to go digital, we've tried to do that. Um, and total costs are in line with kind of our yearly expenses on textbook recommendations. And I have a motion to approve the 2022 yes. 23 oh. textbook recommendations as Second. Permitted. We have a first and a second. Any further questions? Would you pull the board, please? No. Uh, aye. Argua. Aye. Moons. Aye. Shang. Aye. Weisberg. Aye. Frost. Aye. Carries six to nothing. Okay, and that takes us to our personnel section. You'll see that March, of course, is our very heavy personnel month. All of these items are for consent. Um, all of the uh, statutorily required approvals are being presented tonight about first year teachers, second year teachers, third year teachers, appointment to tenure, et cetera. Um, we do have um, some folks who we are non-authorizing, are recommending a resolution to non-authorize for continuing employment. Many of those folks will be hired back uh, since they are part-time. 
you'll see an assortment of administrative contracts, appointment of end staff and support staff, um, and then um, you'll also see um, uh, letters of resignation from uh, Jim Barnaby and Jackie Cullen um, uh, for retirement, actually, um, and Ken Leck as well. I'd really encourage you to read those. They're very nice. Um, and all of those, again, will be covered um, in the consent agenda. Is Latka four years out? Yeah. Yep. Is so. Is he old enough? He looks very young. <laughs> he looks very young. He's, yes. He's a Yes. He's a good Brings us to business. Yep. Brings us to the business section. And the first item tonight is uh, all these items we did. Uh, briefly talk about in the finance committee meeting, but as we discussed, we're bringing forward tonight approval for network equipment through our E-rate program, including um, upgraded connectivity in the stadium uh, to right to the south of us, and a little bit more importantly, replacement of our network firewalls. Um, and that bid actually came in about two hundred fifty thousand dollars lower. So tonight, we are recommending uh, that the board of education award the bid for upgraded connectivity in the stadium and sports center and the replacement of our firewalls uh, at a cost not to exceed $609,898.38. In the motion. So moved. Second. Any further questions? Does Gary have a chance to weigh in? He has, yes. And just as a reminder, I think the important thing to keep in mind is of that 609, 40% of that we do get back. Yes, that's what I was going to ask. Yeah, we get 40% of that back. Okay. Uh, any further questions? Would you pull the board, please? Wow. Aye. Moons, aye. Shane? Aye. Weisberg? Aye. Frost? Aye. No? Aye. Carry six to nothing. Okay, also tonight we're bringing forward uh, a recommendation for approval of a new point of sale system. Our point of sale system currently is Blackboard, but it really is not meeting our needs. If you imagine we have thousands of kids we're trying to move through our cafeteria lines quickly, um, and the Blackboard system, although it was you know, something that 10, 15 years ago was, you know, useful for us. Just the number of kids we're trying to get through quickly, um, you know, we need a new a new vendor. So this will do a lot of things. One, it'll allow for mobile pay for kids, uh, which a lot of kids, you know, like to have access to. But also, um, it'll make for quicker transaction experiences when kids want to use credit cards. Um, because we do have some kids who want to use credit cards, and the time between swiping your ID and using a credit card is fairly significant. Um, and even though 10 seconds might not sound like a whole lot, when you're trying to move through 1,500 kids, you know, through the cafeteria, it adds up. So tonight we're bringing forward a recommendation for a new point of sale system, to, uh, which is Seaboard, at a cost not to exceed $241,749.54. Okay, motion. So moved. Second. What was the item again? Is this a new? Expense? Uh, it was, but it was in the budget. What was the budget? Um, I think I want to say a little bit higher. We can ask Sean specifically, but this is higher. It was whatever we budget for was higher. Will it be implemented for next this school year? Correct, this summer during the downtime. Yeah. And how long is the for? Early two thousand. We used to use it for more than just our point of sale system. So, so the old system can only take the student ID? No, it can take credit cards, but it's much slower. Um, and it just, we need to be able to move kids through lines. And it, it doesn't allow for, you know, mobile pay, uh -huh. Apple pay, things like that. You know, it wasn't, Blackboard was never, my understanding, Blackboard was never built as a point of sale system. Mm -hmm point of sale is something they added on mm -hmm. later, but that's not their core competency, is my impression. But Will there be, can you put your ID on there so you can use Patriot dollars on your phone? I don't know if Patriot dollars will pop up like in your Apple wallet, but yes, your ID can be on your, your phone. Can be on there. Yeah, but I don't know if like you can just do that. I don't know. But either way, this is super fast. We would prefer kids just to still swipe because they they do it. They're they're good at it, you know. But yes, the IDs will be on the phone. If there's no further questions, would you pull the board? Uh, sure. Moons, aye. Shane? Aye. 
Westford. Aye. Frost. Aye. No. Aye. Ironwell. Aye. Six to nothing. Okay, and as we talked about um, earlier in our finance committee meeting, um, we are recommending uh, an authorization uh, and notice of publication for adoption of the 2021-2022 uh, amended budget. Um, and again, we discussed this uh, earlier this evening. Um, so the first recommendation tonight is that the Board of Education set a public hearing for purposes of reviewing the amended budget on Monday, May 16th, 2022. Any motion? So yes, sir. Second. Wait, who first did? I did. Who was the item? Amy. Who? Amy. Thank you. Got it. Okay. Uh, would you hold the board? Sure. Bones? Aye. Shay? Aye. Weisberg? Aye. Frost? Aye. No? Aye. Arwa? Aye. Six to nothing. <clears throat> okay, and then as you know, as required, uh, we are statutorily required to put the tenant budget on display for public viewing, um, and that will begin um, tomorrow, March 15th, 2022. Okay, a motion. So Second. We're very busy down that end of the board. Okay, so that was Dave and then Amy. I got it. Okay. And then Amy again? Yes. Yeah. Oh, sorry. We're typing. <laughs> Okay. Uh, would you pull the board? Sure. Shane. Aye. Westford. Aye. Frost. Aye. No. Aye. Iowa. Aye. Moons. Aye. Okay. And that brings us to the uh, final item <clears throat> in Sean's section, and that's approval of our uh, joint agreement with the Lake County, Lake County Tech Campus. Uh, as you know, we have a, really, a very long standing and solid relationship uh, with the Tech Campus. Um, and this is uh, just a renewal uh, of our agreement uh, with the Lake County Tech Campus Board. It's something that they do periodically, um, but we're fully in support of continuing to use the Tech Campus for the approximately 50 or so kids that uh, go up there each day. Can we have a motion? Second. Good time to move Thank you. Any questions about the Lake County agreement? Where is the, where is this campus so <clears throat> the Tech Campus is up on the College of Lake County campus grounds. Mm -hmm. And it essentially what the Tech Campus is, a, it's a joint agreement of all of the Lake County high schools. Mm -hmm. And it's a cooperative. And they offer classes that we just don't have the enrollment for, mm -hmm. or we couldn't sustain the programmings in our own school. So for example, back in the day, it used to be things like auto shop, wood shop, um, wood shop things like that. We, you know, the numbers of kids interested here isn't, we weren't able to sustain a program like that, but if three of our students want to go up to Lake County to take that class, they can go up there. They have amazing programs, cosmetology, um, they have EMT courses, they have Project Lead the Way, even though we also have Project Lead the Way. Um, they have architecture courses. They have some pre-medicine programs. Um, they're, they have culinary programs. Um, radio TV. Radio TV. It's a great Hello. program. But again, those are, they're all, most of them are programs that we wouldn't be able to sustain ourselves. Yeah. So we send the kids up there and then we pay tuition on a student by student basis to the tech campus. So. It's our credit vocation. Instead of private, this is a private college. Well, yeah. Okay. But they get dual college. They get some college credit, do they not? Oh, yeah. Some. Not, not all of them. Some of them. Like us. <coughs> Would you pull the board, please? Uh, yes, of course I will. Um, good. Weisberg? Aye. Frost? Aye. No? Aye. Aye. Well, aye. Who's I, Shane? Aye. Six to nothing. Okay. And you'll see a, a bevy of lawyer requests there. Yeah. And take a look at it. And that brings right. us to the consent agenda. Okay. Can I have a motion for the consent agenda, please? So yes. So moved. Second. Thank you, Shane. Okay. Uh, any questions for Eric on the consent? Mm -hmm. Would you please pull the board? Yes. 
Crust. Aye. No. Aye. Iwa. Aye. Carson. Nope. She's not there. Moons. Aye. Shang. Aye. Weisberg. Aye. Six to nothing. Okay. And then just a couple items tonight. Um, the first is you have uh, in front of you a copy of our annual report. So just want to um, offer some kudos to Jamie O and her entire team. This is fantastic. Thank you for pulling this together. <clears throat> I know the board has committed to um, providing more information to the community and uh, the annual report. Pub publishing the annual report is one way to be able to do that. So. Uh, I just think it looks amazing, um, and Jamie, thank you for all the work. I know it was a lot of work that went into that. Um, and then in addition to the annual report, you know that we produce the board bulletin, you know, after each board meeting, uh, the Daily Digest goes out, the Minuteman goes out, so there's a lot of information that we publish to the community for those folks who want to stay connected to what's happening here at Stevenson. Can you just change me some? Yep. Um, I just want to publicly uh, tell you so the board members hear this as well. Some of the feedback I got back on the report were a lot of people know that Stevenson is a great school and our academics are great, but they didn't appreciate the level of different programs going on in the school in order to equip the students with the skills that they're going to need. And you were able to communicate that in this report. So mm -hmm. kudos to you and your team. Uh, it was really well done. Yeah, I got some positive feedback as well that they people appreciated it and really, really liked it. Okay. Um, also, uh, you'll notice uh, um, as we do every March, there was a whole lot of personnel items in there. Um, just know that uh, for the past two years, we have not been able to offer a 10 year party or a 25 year celebration or even a retirement party. Um, but this year, it looks like, knock on wood, uh, we're going to be back to being able to celebrate our folks. Um, and for the purposes of kind of simplicity, just given you know the timing of everything and what is available at the Marriott, uh, we're going to have one evening where we're going to celebrate the last three years of tenure, 25 year, and retirement all at the same time. So it should be a big, fun celebration it's going to be on thursday may 19th uh, jamie's team is working on some uh, invitations you'll get one to that um, this is a you know um uh you know none must uh some can you know at least one person should attend you know <laughs> like so um oh, those are fun parties and they're very fun so it'd be great to have all of you but if we can get a couple of you there that would be fantastic uh and I think we have over 200 folks that will be celebrating wow. for different wow. milestones in their career. And again, that's because we, we haven't been able to do much for three years. So um, it should be a lot of fun. But we'll give you more details um, uh, as, as the months unfold. And then, uh, again, just want to remind you, we had a really great um, past couple weeks of state champions. And so we're going to do those in May in the West Auditorium. We'll give you details. Um, and then in April, we'll be back here in our normal spot. And we may have um, our student success story awards as well for May. So that will be. I'm sorry, for April. Um, we're just hoping to be able to get the timing worked out. So that'd be a lot of fun. So. Are you know, May? May the teams? May is the teams in the West in the Building. West Hopefully, April here for student success stories. Okay. Yep. Cool. Are we going back to third Mondays? So next Monday is spring break. Oh, Sorry. I mean, the reason we didn't do it this month is because next Monday is spring break. But yes, so we're going back to third Mondays. So I don't have to call Steve and say, "What are we doing today?" Okay. <laughs> Until we're back to the second Mondays. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which is yeah. Which is following third, the third <laughs> Monday. Okay. Anything else? Who's up first? Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Wait, we have not officially adjourned. We have to go. Oh, I'm oh. sorry. Uh, can I have a motion to adjourn? Eight. So moved. Second. We have a first, second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. We are adjourned. Thank you.